Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about why every single intake for the VBWX needs a tune. We're gonna talk about the engineering, we're gonna talk about what the manufacturers are saying, we're gonna talk about what tuners are saying, and I'm gonna give you guys a full understanding about why if you wanna put an intake on your VBWX, you need a tune. And this is gonna be talking really about from safety and practicality and not risking what could be a very, very expensive fix, which is your engine going. So I wanna give some credit because Subi Speed has created a video very similar to this, and basically I'm building off the video that they have created. They went out and tested the three main intakes that we're talking about in this video, which are the main intakes that people are installing. That's the AEM intake, the parent intake, and the ETS intake for the VBWX. And they worked with Paragon Performance, and they actually ran all three intakes stock and tune them and talked about some of the things that they saw from AFR ratios, lean, rich, what they saw and what they recommended. I've then gone out and to build on that, talked with other tuners, looked at other numbers and got experiences from other high volume VB tuners. So I can come and make this video so you guys can get a real understanding of what's actually happening on the dyno sheets and how these cars are actually running when you run these intakes stock. Let's split the three intakes into two groups. So you have two intakes that mimic quite fairly closely the stock intake and one that is pretty out there. Out there isn't bad, it's just looking for more performance. So the Perrin is probably the closest to the stock intake, you know, the closest diameter opening. It's still opening it up, it's still a bigger filter, it's a more optimized filter, but it's closest to the stock intake for some you know, for a very reasonable reason of trying to make it so you can run it without a tune. The AEM is a very close second to that where it's trying to mimic the stock intake as much as possible. And then you have obviously the ETS intake, which is kind of going out for larger and is capable for larger uh, horsepower builds. If you're doing turbo upgrades, it does have a bigger math housing. So there's more you can do with it. There's more power that you can have from it but it is the furthest away from the stock intake. One of the things that's generally different with this platform from the VA is from the VA, the intake was fairly optimized. You know, it wasn't necessarily the first thing you want to do if you wanted to build more power. One of the bigger differences with the VB is the intake is probably the best place to build power, you know, from the get-go. Tuned, you can get upwards of 30 to 40 wheel horsepower from an intake alone, and even stock, you can get up to 20 wheel horsepower from the intake without any tuning. That's really, the co that's really the key to understand here when you're thinking about tuning, but we'll get to that later. Really, the FA24 does have somewhat of a restriction on airflow. So when you relieve that restriction on airflow, you're getting more vo a higher volume of air to the engine, which is a higher density of oxygen or a higher volume, which means just a larger oxygen molecule count, specifically to your turbo and then to the combustion cycle. And then you're pushing that through and more oxygen means better performance. It means bigger power output, and then better performance. But let's say you're considering an intake. On the manufacturer website, both AEM, well, AEM pretty clearly states that you do not need a tune to drive with their intake. Perrin performance, depending on who you ask, and most of the Perrin reps will say you don't need a tune to uh, run their uh, intake. And I guess the overarching thing to say is we'll knock the ETS intake out of there. Do not drive with an ETS intake without a tune. You very much need a tune. The parent and the AM intakes. So the short answer is both intakes are pretty good. Most tuners will say, you know, they can somewhat perform on the stock tune. They're not optimized. What is actually gonna happen is both are gonna run fairly lean from the mid range all the way if through the RPMs as you rev it out. And the AEM, most people are reporting a little bit of knock on the upper range, you know, high mid to upper range, you're gonna register some knock. So what that's, what's actually happening there is both are, you know, the knock's being caused by leaning out. So if the parent leans out enough, you might get some knock registers there as well. I didn't hear that as much. It was mainly the AM that they were registering knock. Now, a lot of people haven't done a hot lot of high volume here because, you know, the tuners are running a stock run just to see before they tune it. That's where it's really, that's where a lot of this information is coming from. Obviously, Paragon Performance did that study with Subi Speed. But the short answer is if you install a Perrin or AEM intake and you don't tune your car, you're gonna run lean. And if you really, really, really push your car, that's when you get into the dangerous factor of what can happen when you run lean. So, they're pretty good, they're okay if you're running in a daily driving scenario, you're not risking too much, and that's basically what I wanted to talk to you, that's generally what's being said. If you want no risk, if you want a safe mod, if you want a safe bolt-on, you've gotta tune it, and that's the caveat. So 
You can run them without the stock. It's not gonna, the car's not gonna break. You're not gonna, well, the car's not gonna break down immediately. You're not gonna throw a check engine light, probably, but you are running some level of risk. You know, you're leaning out the engine. More airflow is going in and you're not correcting the air fuel ratios during throttle. And I think that's what's important to understand here is they do require tunes to run optimally and they do require tunes to run as safely as possible, right? That's an unavoidable thing. If you don't want to run the car lean, you have to get a tune. And I guess what I'm, you know, the video that I'm making here and the point that I'm making is addressed to the average WRX consumer. I've made videos in the past that talk about the average WRX consumer has a loan on their vehicle. They are making significantly less than what they need to to own a vehicle like this. I'm not gonna go into that. I'm not gonna dig too deep into that. But the short answer is most people have loans on their vehicles and most people couldn't have just bought it outright. And the reason I mention that is because if you do have a problem and you damage your engine, you know, an engine replacement, eight to 10K. If you do it yourself, maybe 7K. If you buy it and do it yourself, like, you know, there aren't a lot of FA24s out there right now, honestly, you know, and the ones that are have already been, you know, split turbos are getting sold X, Y, Z, depending on what kind of damage you do to the car, who knows? But the short answer is it becomes kind of dangerous when you do have debt on the car or you're not in a position to, you know, maybe next week without any warning need to spend eight to 10K. That's a reality of tuning these cars. It's not gonna happen to everyone. We're talking about low chances, but it could happen and you're increasing your odds of it happening, running your car lean and really pushing it through. How many of you guys install an intake to make more power to not floor it, right? Or really go through and do some nice acceleration. 70, 80, 90% throttle. You know, most of us are doing that, you know, from time to time or a lot, you know, it doesn't, you know, who knows, right? The short answer is, if you're doing that, you need a tune. And I think, you know, I talked about it as much as I can here. Hopefully I landed with you guys. Hopefully you guys understand what you're getting into. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.